1. In 2016, my husband and I purchased a foreclosed home on over 10 acres. When my friends sent me the listing, I saw the street name and was curious. I didn't know what it would actually mean in the near future. Now, I won't be posting the name of this street or the state we live in just for safety reasons. Why? I listen to too much true crime and know better. Y'all some weirdos. The history. The graveyard. My street is named after a long-lost graveyard that was the final resting place for many people in a small community of enslaved peoples. There is written and transcribed history of its location, but it's never been found and all that remember its location have passed on now. The only major clue we have is that it was marked by a large brown stone. In our area, stones and boulders are not common, so that would be a good landmark. But it has never been located. The reason this graveyard is notable is for one supposed resident. From my reading, he was a well-known enslaved man who became a soldier and, later, a talented author publishing multiple books. His life is fairly well documented, but by the end of his life is where the details fray. Due to being forced into hiding, his whereabouts became hard to track. Some say he perished in Pennsylvania, while local lore insists he died and was buried here. Other known residents, Henny. There have been stories as well as information listed in records and maps of a descendant of enslaved people, a woman named Henny, who also lived in this area. One of my neighbors, who has lived on this land since childhood, remembers her when she was living. I have another neighbor who recently built his home on family land. One day I had the pleasure of meeting his extended family. They were telling me about their history on the land. When the eldest grandmother told me of her mother's cabin, she pointed into the woods nearby where I knew the ruins of a cabin were and said, My mama was Mrs. Henny and I was born in a cabin right over there. Henny is relevant later. This book, I'm just going to list these in order. The Distorted Broadcast. We had to do a large amount of renovation when we bought the home, so we spent time there with very little furniture. No TV, no stereo, no radio. We used headphones for audio entertainment, but mostly it was very quiet there. I had been at the house all day and had been hearing this strange garbled sound. It was faint, but it sounded as if you had an AM radio tuned between two stations. I could hear talking, but not understand the words and there was static along with an occasional few notes of out-of-tune music. I'd been hearing this all day and finally mentioned it to my husband when he came home. He sort of froze and stared at me. I said, what? And then he told me that he had been out in the woods exploring and found an old glass tube radio. He, of course, thought it was neat and brought it home. He put it in the basement just that morning. The door. There's a door going between my basement to my garage that is large, heavy, poorly fitted, and a pain to open and close. When you do close it, there's quite a big sound from the big door squeezing into the almost too small frame. I've been home alone on multiple occasions when I know that door is closed and I suddenly hear it close on its own without hearing it open. The Elemental I consider myself sort of sensitive to things beyond the veil, enough so that I've educated myself on the different manifestations that can occur. I strongly believe there is something that resides in my basement that is not human. Is energy without a face but a lot of opinions. We have experienced cold breezes, lights going off and on, just a general feeling of go away but not in a violent way. But in a... I've manifested here. This is mine. Get out. Some days it doesn't mind sharing space, others you can feel it rushing and pushing you out of its area. It seems to mind me less than my husband and former dog walker. It could be who shuts, and I assume has to open, the door. The lighter. My entire life I had believed in the paranormal, but had never experienced something I couldn't explain. That changed in this house. My husband and I were cooking dinner when a series of strange events occurred. We had fully moved into the house and had the Alexa playing music. We were listening along when the song changed mid-chorus to Tequila Makes Her Clothes Fall Off. 
And this is going to seem made up, but I swear to y'all, this is what happened next. A bottle of Patron that had been sitting on the counter since our wedding a year earlier. We don't drink. It was left over and had been sealed since. It suddenly expelled its cork onto the counter. We both watched it happen. Taking my cue that something wasn't right here, I went to grab some sage from storage. How I thought that was going to help, I don't even know. From the kitchen, I hear my husband shout, Nope, uh-uh, screw this, burn the whole house down. I come back in confused, and he says while pointing to one of the two long nose lighters we had on the counter, because our stove wasn't lighting properly. That lighter just spun around on the table completely on its own. He was pointing to the purple lighter with the red one beside it. I was shocked and rejected the idea as some sort of joke. I said, no it didn't, you're making that up. I finished my sentence and watched as right in front of me the red lighter did its own spin, as if spun by an invisible hand. That is one sight I cannot explain or dismiss. The Emergency At 4am I was passed out on the couch, the house was quiet. Suddenly there's a loud banging and flashlights at my front door. I scream, my husband comes running out of our room in his drawers and answers the door to four county police officers, guns drawn. Once he verifies that he's the homeowner, they ask if anyone was in distress. We told them no, and asked why. Apparently the sheriff's department had received not one, but three calls from our landline to 911, where they only heard screaming. We don't have a landline phone. Even more than that, the power company accidentally cut our physical landline cable in the ground over a year prior. Henny. This story is borrowed from my neighbor who knew Henny. When my neighbor was a child, her father was a farmer and used to give Henny produce. Every day, Henny would walk two miles over fields and woods to pick up various veggies from his farm. Now, this wouldn't be that odd, but Henny was in her 80s and completely blind. Stories were told that Henny was a witch, and that is how she managed the journey without her sight. Even more stories about how her sight was lost. They said that when she was much younger, that she had found out her husband had been having multiple affairs. To punish him, she cast a spell or brewed a potion that made him deaf, blind, and mute, so that no woman would want him. The payoff for that spell was that when he died, she would also suffer one of the three fates. He died years later, and suddenly she went blind. Many years after her passing, her cabin still apparently standing, but mostly overtaken by woods. My neighbor and her brother were riding horses down the road. Suddenly these calm, bomb-proof, quiet, sensible horses landed their feet and refused to move another inch. No matter what they did to push them forward, the horses pranced and pawed and wanted to turn back down the road. When my neighbor looked to find out what they were so upset about, she followed their gaze to the edge of the woods, where the walls of Henny's cabin stood, and there within the window was Henny, watching them with her milky blind eyes. Smaller Occurrences Just weird little things that have happened that don't have a whole story attached. Barn We cleared land and built a barn in 2019, since then, I have heard the songs of a child and the voice of a man in the barn. Clear enough that I've gone looking for them. I don't know the workings of the new structures attracting spirits, but we have never experienced this before the barn was built. It seems that if there was a spirit of a female child, she likes horses. I do find missing things in places that make no sense at all, like she's playing with me. I never hear the singing and the harsh male voice at the same time, so I don't think they get on. Light in the Woods When we moved to the property, there was no one around for acres and thick, mature forest surrounding us. We cleared some land for a paddock for our horses and then started noticing a warm orange light in the woods just beyond the fence line. I saw the light one night and insisted we investigate in case it was someone camping in our woods. My husband was not interested in seeing the spooky light in the woods, and said we should wait till daytime and then look. The next day we hiked up there to see what it could be. We found the ruins of another cabin that we did not know was there, exactly where the light was shining. 
we still see the light. Man in overalls. Both my husband and I have seen sort of out of the corner of my eye type of thing. An older black man with curly white hair wearing overalls. Usually when we're out doing something on the land we just see him walking on the farm like he has somewhere to be. No interactions. Just a brief flash of him in movement and then he's gone. There's more I'm sure that I've forgotten or blocked out of my mind. I have a lot of interest in locating the graveyard and giving it and its residents the respect it deserves, as well as having a medium do a visit of our farm. If either of these things are something you have expertise in, and would like to help or assist with research, send me a DM. 2. This happened in Victoria, Australia. It was presumably a hot summer that year. We'd packed into the family van with Dad driving, and we were off to the lake. Since it was shorter and more scenic, Dad decided to take the back road rather than go on the asphalt. Sitting in the back seat with a book, as usual, I looked up to watch the scenery as trees zipped by and the remnant vegetation turned into paddocks. Dust rose up behind the van, and we turned onto another dusty road. We were almost at the lake now. You could never drive on these roads in the winter unless you had a four-wheel drive or similar vehicle, because the rain would make them boggy and you'd slip and slide and all that stuff you just didn't want. But when it was dry, the roads were fine. It still wasn't a good idea to get too far off the road onto the side of the road, and you could fall into a ditch or get stuck. But generally, you were safe from getting bogged. Sometimes you might even see a sheep that had somehow escaped its paddock roaming the area. Inside the van, as I watched, getting ready to turn away and go back to my book, I saw something following after the van in the dust, almost bounding after us. It wasn't a sheep, but it was something. It was the shape of an animal, and it was keeping time with the van, not getting further away or closer. Though we were going fast, and at first I thought it might be something caught under the vehicle that was trailing behind, but I couldn't see anything connecting whatever it was to the van. Besides, it was quite large, and I think I would have heard if we'd driven over something, but I hadn't heard anything. Dad hadn't slowed down or swerved or remarked upon running over anything either. I stared at it intently, but I couldn't make it out through the dust. It just seemed to be following us. At this point, I got scared and turned around to ask somebody else if they could see the thing too, and when I turned back to look again, I could no longer see it. To this day, I have no idea what it was, and it still gives me the creeps just thinking about it. In the back of my mind, I kind of wonder if it was some kind of interdimensional creature. Or maybe I just watched too much Stargate as a teenager. Whatever the case... I'd been down that road again, and I have never seen anything strange or out of the ordinary. And I had never seen any odd creatures any other times either. The odd spirit or two, perhaps, but nothing that creeped me out nearly as much as this did. There was just something about how it was following us, and how it disappeared and I could no longer see it on the road. That just gets to me. 3. This happened when I was 16, in the Rocky Mountains. My father and I used to love ghost hunting. He used to do it all the time when he was a teen. He lived in a small town in the mountains that was founded by Mormon pioneers. During our family reunion in said small town we were camping, he thought it would be fun to bring me and a couple of my cousins to a cemetery known for being haunted. The cemetery was very small and consisted of Native Americans and pioneers. It was old, and most of the graves were unmarked. I didn't know much about ghost hunting and the rules, so I thought it would be interesting to see if I could capture a recording of their voices. I called out to the space and asked if anyone was there. My cousins tried asking questions as well. We asked if anything could try and make a sound, touch us, or move something. I ended the recording and listened to it. Uh, nothing was on it. Disheartened, we went back to the reunion and went to bed. The next day, I went to my mom's house. Everything seemed completely normal until I went to bed. 
That night I tried to get my dog to come to bed with me, but I couldn't find her anywhere. Which was weird, because she came to bed with me every night. I was very tired, so I just went to my room and went to bed alone. In the middle of the night, I jolted awake. There was an alarm clock next to my bed. It read exactly three o'clock. I sat up and heard a slight scratching sound. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. As that sound grew louder, the doorknob started to jiggle. It slowly turned all the way around and the door creaked open. It opened all the way and in the hallway was a black, smoky-looking creature, taller than the frame itself. He had glowing yellow eyes, and I could make out its mouth and sharp-looking teeth. I immediately freaked the hell out and backed away. I threw my covers over my head. As I did so, I saw it jolt in my direction. I could feel it jump on my bed. It was almost slithering around, saying things in a tongue I didn't recognize. I was crying and pleading with the universe to save me. I didn't sleep. It stopped around six in the morning. I fell asleep after that and woke up around eleven. Honestly, I couldn't figure out if the previous night was a dream or reality. But when I saw the door ajar, I knew it actually happened. I had no idea what to do to protect myself, so the next night I made sure to find my dog who was a border collie. I went to bed and she was at my feet, seemingly a little anxious. I woke up again. Right at three, I could see my dog staring into the corner. I pulled her a little closer to me. I felt her hair standing straight up on edge. She started growling, and I could see what she was growling at. In the corner of my room, I saw it again, standing and staring at me, not moving but smiling awkwardly. My dog was trying to inch closer, growling intently, as she did, the creature vanished. Of course, I didn't sleep until I thought it was safe to do so. The next day, I looked up what to do online. I read that you should buy incense and burn and say a blessing, stating that nothing is allowed to enter the space or follow me. So I did exactly that. I bought the incense and went through my entire house and every entryway and said a blessing to prevent the creature from returning. That night I held my dog close and prayed that nothing would happen. Nothing did happen, or come back since then. I am always on edge about this ever since. What if one day that thing decides it wants me again? What if it gets enough power to come back? 4. I have always been a staunch atheist and not a believer in the paranormal but I saw something in Albania that I can't get out of my head. I'd like to start this off with a bit of a history lesson. During the Second World War, Albania was occupied by the Nazis. After the Second World War, Albania decided that the best way to fend off fascism in the future was to become communist and isolationist. They closed their borders in 1946 and declared themselves the world's first atheist nation in 1967. Religion was outlawed in 1967, and religious buildings were repurposed or destroyed. Previously, Albania was a mix of primarily Catholicism and Islam, and just because it is not legal does not mean a person will stop practicing their faith. Catholics were seen as a special threat due to a perceived loyalty to the Holy See of the state. Shkodra, a city in northern Albania, housed a prison that held and tortured practitioners of Catholicism. Many people died there when they refused to give up fellow practitioners under extreme forms of torture. The prison is now part of a museum called the Site of Witness and Memory. The first part details the events heading up to and following the outlawing of religion by Enver Hoxha, and the second part details what went on in the prison. At the end, you are permitted to walk into the prison and its cells. On the bottom floor, some cells display prominent people who were held there and resistance in the face of a concentration camp. Others display anti-religious propaganda, and some tell stories of camp conditions and how information was shared throughout the camp. Most of the cells are empty, but you can walk inside them. 
Each measure is about five feet by five feet. The last room was much larger. It is where the inmates were brought for questioning. The original desk, typewriter, and telephone are there, as well as a chair where the inmates would have sat. There is a second story to the prison. I went upstairs to check it out, but all of the cells were empty. To be sure I didn't miss anything, I poked my head into each one as I made my way down the hallway. Once I was sure the cells were empty, I began to walk back to go downstairs. Out of the corner of my eye in one of the cells, I catch a black figure. I caught a surprising amount of detail for only catching a glance. It was about 5'6", emaciated, and was standing head against the corner, hands on its face, and facing away from me. Pure black, and with shadows spreading out and away from it. At first, I thought it was a cardboard cutout I had missed, so I took a couple of steps back to check. The room was empty. I was overtaken by a sense of pure fear. I wasn't in any danger, but I don't think I was ever that scared before. I ran out of that museum. I'm sure I got a couple of odd looks from security and other attendees. I haven't been able to shake what I saw. I don't think I believe in the paranormal, but I also have no explanation as to what I saw. It looked and felt real. Five. I have just realized everything I'm about to tell you, so my fingers are still a little shaky. I live in a Venezuelan island in the Caribbean called Margarita. Been there for the most part of my life. A lot of people here are still very rooted to the original human experience. Some are not even into technology, they're just about nature, fishing, drinking with neighbors on the beach, celebrating their religious beliefs. What you would find people doing 50 or 60 years back. Maybe due to their disconnection to the digital world, it is very common to find people with special gifts. I mean witches, clairvoyants, seers, you name it. I have never surrounded myself with those kinds of people, nor will I, but I just had this experience a few weeks ago, and I just had my mind blown. It was a Monday at 11pm. I was at the beach with a pal and a group of girls that were visiting the island for the first time. We were having a nice time. We had a couple of beers until one of the girls asked me if I had any cigarettes. I smoked sometimes, but I didn't have any cigarettes on me. Plus, finding any bar or shop open at 11pm Monday is basically an impossible task. Though I still tried. The guy that was watching the cars told me he'd take me to a place if I bought him half a pack. I agreed. We got to the place a few blocks down the road. I walked in and asked the cashier for two packs of Marlboro. There was a woman sitting in the bar, maybe in her fifties. She had piercing eyes and was probably a little drunk, as she was drinking rum and her cheeks were super red. This is where it gets creepy. She greeted me and we started talking about how Marlboro were better than other brands of cigarettes. She looked me dead in the eye and told me, even though I live here, in this island, I wasn't born here, which was true. She told me I had something latched onto me that was taking good care of me on the other side, and that's why I've survived my near-death experiences. I've had a few. A very close type of few. I was silent for a second and told her that if it's watching over me, it's probably good. Right? She laughed, extended her hand to shake mine, and as she shook it, she was sort of rubbing it. Her eyes went blank as she did, and that's when I felt chills all over my body. My heart started racing, then she stood up, leaned up to me as if she wanted to tell me a secret and told me, There's an all-time buddy of yours that knows all about the good and bad stuff that happened to you. He cheers you when you fail and hates it when you move up. The thing you have with you will show you who that false friend is. And end the friendship on terrible terms. Do not hesitate to do what you must. At this point, I already had my cigs, was scared, and just wanted to get the hell out of there. So I thanked her for the advice and left. The days passed, and I never gave it any deeper thought, until I had a huge fight with a friend of ten years and blocked him everywhere, never to contact him again. I won't get into details to keep this short, but 
It was a friend I helped for years who told me I wasn't his friend for not being able to lend him money for the 999th time. It was quite a showdown, though. We were pretty close to physically hurting each other, but whatever. Even then, I couldn't make the connection between what the old lady at the bar had told me and with what just happened. Until a few minutes ago. She nailed every single detail. The timing was also on point. It's like she read my life without me even having a clue of what she was talking about. Don't know if she was a witch or whatever, but... There are really other forces in this world that we ignore. Stop ignoring it. Pretty much everything happens for a reason, and life gives you signs. So when it does, make sure to follow your gut, and skip all rules of society about it. Hey everybody, Halfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Paranormal Stories, episode 372. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please do poke the like button, it does actually help. And if you'd like to get early access to these videos, that's very easy to achieve. You can get that by joining us over on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description. You'll get the links to all the week's videos on a Monday. You'll also find links in there to the Hellfreezer merchandise store, which is on Teespring. And there's also a link, I believe, to the Hellfreezer Discord. It should still be active. I don't think my links expire. And if you really enjoyed today's video, why not leave a tip? You can do that by clicking on the little heart with a dollar sign underneath the video. And none of that is ever required, but I am grateful if you choose to do so. Okay. Let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And we might even have an answer of the day. And today's question is... Is there anything spooky that you yourself just don't personally believe in, but you'll err in the side of caution and not risk having one in your home? Like, I don't believe Ouija boards work. I genuinely don't. I do respect it if you do, but it's just personally, it doesn't, it doesn't click for me. But I will never have one in the house. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> for any reason. Why don't you let me know what your answers are, if you're willing to share in a comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day from a previous video. And this was in relation to your favourite Easter candy. Now, as Mary Clements did ask in a comment to update whether or not I was able to get Cadbury's eggs, I have not got them yet. I have, it slipped my mind, even though I've been out several times this week. I'll pick some up next week when I go out. But today's answer comes from... Shigar Gaming Central. Stale peeps for the win are the best treats. They must be stale and have sat out in the air for two days minimum. I wouldn't take uh, food advice from Shigar, however. He is a, a good potato, but also a strange boy with many strange habits, at least when it comes to food. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening. And take very good care of yourselves.